Oh my god! <laughs> Go back down in gear or two. So, Africa Twin, Africa Twin, <laughs> the Africa Twin, the Honda Africa Twin DCT. Shifts gears for you, you can shift them yourself. There's paddle shifters on the left side. First impressions, this thing is huge and it's comfy. I always like how you get the wide ass bars on an adventure bike. Not ideal for, oh, whoops, the Honda thing. Uh, the horn is at the place of the, at the indicators. Let's see how it pulls up off a hill. Dude, this is I don't feel any gear shifting happening. I like it. The sound is nice. I'm pretty sure it's the standard exhaust, but the rest of them sound to it. Let's see, shift down, first gear. Yeah, man. Shifting is also ridiculously smooth. So, it's big. I'm gonna keep repeating this over this whole video. This thing is very high off the ground. Although, in the drive, just regular drive, I, I feel like it could go down in gear a bit sooner, or go up in gear a bit later. Although, plenty of torque. Let's put it in sport mode. I don't know what you could expect from this, like brakes are amazing so far, not that I've really used them extremely much, but I don't want to brake too hard because there's people behind me, but suspension is kind of plush on the front in a good way, not too plush. I love the look of it too, I might be a bit biased, but oh man, there's no clutch that you can operate yourself, obviously it's a dual clutch transmission. This is pretty relaxed not having to switch gears when going slow. I think it's kind of like a cross-plane uh, crankshaft because it's, uh, it's a parallel twin. But it sounds real good. It sounds like a V-twin a little bit. Let's see, 6th gear. I don't think it let, it's gonna let me go in 6th gear. 4th gear is my limit at this point. What if I put in drive mode? 5th gear is my limit. A bit lumpy. Put in sport again. I don't feel any gear shifting happening. The most noticeable part of the gear shifting is the the engine noise. Oh, okay, that one was a bit rough down at first. But uh, also, it's me who, who shifted it, who at least who forced the bike to shift into it. Okay, let's try 6th gear, 70 kph. A bit lumpy, but to be expected for a twin. Still, nothing... Uh, Nothing out of the ordinary, I feel. It also auto blips and everything. Man, this is great. You can turn off the ABS for the rear wheel, which is nice for like off-roading and stuff. Oh my god! <laughs> I think it's got about a hundred horsepower. I'm not sure like between 90 and 100. I'm, pre I'm pretty certain about it And they do come up like they, they do make their appearance at a bit of a higher rpm like it's really there's plenty of torque down to be to be had down like Still goes let me put it in drive. So it stays in fourth gear fourth gear 60 kph Okay back in sport 
feel like I'm not in a good place in the pack. I don't want to switch my place because uh, the people behind me, then they got to switch up the whole pack thing, pack uh, structure, so. The DCT is is great. The engine is you can feel it thumping a little bit, and that's the most feedback that you're gonna get. I mean, from like the mechanical standpoint of the whole the whole thing. When it comes to engine and uh, clutch, like shifting gears is just not noticeable. Back to fourth, third. Let's see how smart the computer is. I'm in fifth gear right now. What if I open it? Does it go back a gear? Yup. <laughs> it goes back two gears. You're kind of letting the computer know. Let's go. I don't know if it's got heated grips built in. I don't see any cables running through the wires. And like, I know if it's done nice and flush, like, uh, you know, like a legit motorcycle, like a legit new kind of flagshipy motorcycle and it's not going to be visible but I don't see anywhere to turn it on there are plenty of buttons but the other one the one I saw in, in the showroom it had some cables running through the to the grips so maybe this one doesn't have it. I don't know you do feel the bumps which I like I don't know how how that will feel in uh, when you're off-road or if it adjusted or no, but you feel plenty of feedback and I like it. And you just take off with no clutch. Well, standing up is easy. I got like, there's nothing in the way of my legs to prevent me standing up, so that's nice. Look at all them peasants shifting down with their feet. <laughs> Dude, the front wheel gets light. Plenty of power. To people that say like, oh, it's not, it's not the kind of bike you should be riding. You're into sport bikes and blah, blah, blah. Dude, if it's a good bike, I'll like it. No matter what kind of bike. This is a good bike and I like it. Nice seat too, like a very long seat, you can move back and forth and stuff, which is quite enjoyable. I suppose it's been a while since I've ridden a group. I don't know, I've become a bit of a loner when it comes to riding, like I, either I ride with just one other person or uh, by myself. I'm hoping the group gets to like switch up a little bit because uh, I don't exactly feel like sitting in the front of it. I want to go a bit to the back. So I can see what's up a bit more, have a bit more freedom, you know? Dude, this thing picks up real nicely! About putting it in well, putting it in drive. Yep, still picks up. Sixth gear goes back down to fifth in sport when you give it the beans. I don't know if I'm putting my right foot on the exhaust or not. Like the back of my right foot is is onto something. It's, it would not be handy for me to have this bike in my day-to-day -day traffic because of the wide-ass handlebars. But um, I just love the way they feel in my in my arms and my hands. Oh, now I'm noticing at this speed, with the height of the windscreen right now, there's some buffeting happening on my helmet. If I go down like this, it's gone pretty much. 
but I can feel it on top of my helmet, so it's got to be a bit lower or a bit higher for my height. I'm uh, 185 centi, yeah, 185 centimeters. Shifting is good. The bike shifts good. All right, what's? Oh, I'm touching the exhaust with my <laughs> with my foot. I got. I don't have to like weight like super big feet. I got size 45. So it's not, I'm not too big for it. I feel like if you put a different exhaust, you might fix it because this thing is huge. But I uh, don't completely love it. It's been designed for it. There's a shield down there. So you don't touch the exhaust itself. I mean, I suppose they have to do something with all those, uh, with the European norms and stuff, the emission regulations and stuff. And the best way to do it is with the big ass exhaust and a cat and everything. Red line is at 8,000. 8,000, yeah. I don't, the dash is alright, like you can see how fast you're going, you can't see the top of the RPM gauge, which, uh, which is not great. A lot of information too, you get like range, you get trip meters, trip one, and you can switch between stuff, time elapsed, I don't know, you can time your rides or something like a, like on a track or something, lap times, I don't know, I don't know why different settings for the traction control I'm on setting number five right now I don't know what that means not that, this, not that it really matters we're not going off-road anyway so I'm not catching a shitload of wind either like except for the buffeting on my helmet like you're pretty much out of the wind dude as long as you're not shifting under like extreme throttle you don't notice the shifting see six five nothing and if you let it shift itself, it's even a bit smoother. Because the computer knows exactly when to shift to make it like unnoticeable. The only thing that's annoying me is the typical Honda horn and uh, an indicator placement. I uh, every every motorcycle manufacturer has the same thing except Honda. Go back down a gear or two and jump this shit. That was very easy. Oh, this bike is great. It feels so light. It feels like so easy to to manhandle, you know. And the front wheel just picked up really easy off that bump. And it did not feel out of control or anything. It felt perfectly fine. Very confidence inspiring and everything. I reach for the clutch every now and again. Oh, this thing, by the way, here, that I, it's out of reach, is they, they put it out of reach so people don't accidentally pull in the clutch and it turns out it's not a clutch, it's the it's the rear brake. It's also, there's a regular rear brake, like a foot brake, but this, uh, this is there for, I don't know, for panic situations, I guess. You see something coming at you and pulling everything. Small bumps like this, sir, you don't really have to get up. The bike just kind of ploop ploop. You do notice them, but it's not uncomfortable. I kind of like it. it. Sounds a bit like a like a beefed up MT-07. Nice. Very nice. Take me, everybody, please. All these bumps, this thing soaks it up. Like, you notice the bumps, but it's not uncomfortable. It's nice. You get a feedback, but also you get kind of a plush going down on them. So, I like it. Nope, the front wheel's gonna pick up. <laughs> Scary shit. 
I can't scare you. Let's see what traction control does when you go off. It kicks in though. It sounds nice. It sounds real nice. Sport has multiple sport levels. There's three sport levels. And he said the second one is the one he likes the best. So I don't know which one is more aggressive. I think it goes down like in, a, in aggressiveness from one, two to three. Now I'm on a medium ground, so we'll see what's up if I notice any difference. Maybe a little bit more, <laughs> even more aggressiveness. Stays in the gear even longer. Still in second gear, it doesn't go out of gear, man. You gotta do it yourself, I guess. I don't mind staying in second gear. Just get off with the bumps and it soaks them up. You still stay, you still stay in contact with the ground, but like, it soaks up the bumps real nice. You don't, you don't notice them as a person, like your legs do a lot of the, the dampening too. Sport 3. These all roads are just such fun bikes. I keep saying it, like an old road, you can ride it so hard, like so much harder than people, than you would expect. It goes through corners so nicely. It's very confidence inspiring. Easy to turn in and out. Sport one stays, <laughs> sport three, I mean, stays in first gear a bit too long for comfort. Also in second, still in second gear. Jesus! <laughs> okay, you can shift up now. It's okay. See, I'm not going seven here. Well, let me shift to six when I'm in this uh, crazy mode. Shift it to drive, and then it goes to sixth. Go back to fifth. Go back to second. I don't know if the fueling changes or if just if it shifts uh, later. It's crazy how smooth the shifting is, man. Way smoother than you would be able to shift yourself, no matter who you are. I still like shifting myself, of course, as a motorcyclist. But I can appreciate the smoothness of this. Just the screen, I, I mean, you can see it. I'm not sure how it will work in direct sunlight, but like, as I said, the top of the rev guy, the top of the rev gauge, it's not too visible. So I, I don't completely love that. Like, I always appreciate myself, uh, an analog ref counter and a digital speedo that's that's the sweet spot for me the things i like everything the things I, everything except what i'm gonna say next the things that don't like is the the buttons right there the windscreen i don't know if it's adjustable yes or no i don't think so maybe it is who knows not me but 
I don't in like either way I don't like the height of the windscreen as it is now and I don't love like it's alright uh, but I don't love the uh, the speedo like the whole screen it looks a bit like a phone to me it's functional and everything you get a lot of information I like that but mm, it's not like I hate digital screens too like I love the screen of the CV 1000 Air the Honda that's a great screen it's all digital I like the MT-09 too it's very very minimalistic I like it still not amazing visibility in a ref counter but better than this one although on this one at least the DCT version it doesn't really matter like also like if you if you have a bike you're gonna know what gear you should be in and what rpm you should be riding in without looking at the ref counter and it's even less of a less of a factor in a DCT because the bike pretty much shifts for you and it shifts better than you would so And it <laughs> picks up, picks up real nice. Also now, when it's in the sport mode, now it thinks, oh shit, he's booking it, he's booking it. So let me just stay in second gear a bit longer. So like if he wants to go, I don't have to go back and um, to third or second or whatever. Also engine braking, like the thing, engine brakes nicely. Despite it being automatic. That's the thing, on an adventure bike you can go left and right in corners and shit real nicely, but when a bump comes you don't slow down for you, like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, I'll bump. You just give extra throttle. This shift to second and third gear I did not notice. Oh my god, this is great. The CBR CBF, I don't know, the 650R, I think it's a CBR, has a, the same or similar style gauge to the CB1000R, I like that one, it wouldn't fit on this bike, I think, I think this like this utilitarian one fits better, but if you're going for utilitarian, like, I know it's all tech and stuff, and you know, it's a whole, it's a brave new world out there, but if you are going for a utilitarian style, and if you're not gonna do it like completely visible, the screen, just go with analog, because analog always works when it comes to when it comes to the rev gauge for sure. Alright, my battery died, so I gotta make this quick. I'm a big fan of the DCT, which I did not expect. I like it a lot. Great. Smart computer man in this bike. Right, hopefully the camera doesn't die, but I have figured out a thing that I don't like about the DCT, and that's at very slow speeds. You don't know when the clutch is gonna kick in. You don't know when, it, when the clutch is gonna kick in and you're gonna lose the engine braking, which is a little bit unpredictable. Maybe it's just in a sport motor or something. I, I can imagine only being an issue in one case, which is you're doing some spirit of riding, putting in a sport mode, and you have like a hairpin coming up or something. And you gotta go slow when you don't know what the bike is gonna do exactly when it comes to the gears and the clutch so that's a thing to keep in mind but yeah i don't know if you go if you're doing a lot of speed riding i don't think you're gonna go for the dct <laughs> the thing i also don't like is that my right foot is restricted by the engine like there's not a lot of places that you can move your your leg to it's kind of restrictive and that's another thing I don't like. Well, now this bike feels tiny. Oh my god, I shift gears myself, man. This is a, this is such a peasant bike right now. <laughs> right. So what I found about the bike, awesome. But. Uh, you got a lot of space for your legs compared to this for sure and this is pretty upright and I have plenty of space on this compared to my sport bike compared to the SV except your right foot there's not a lot of space for your right foot like the engine is in the front of it and the back of it you got the exhaust 
that's uh, the only thing I didn't like about the sitting position other than that screen was a bit too low or too high it doesn't matter either way either way it would be better for my length DCT it kicks in a bit like for my like I haven't ridden it enough I, I suppose you get you get a feeling for it but like when you go in very low speeds you don't know exactly when it's gonna kick in the the clutch so those are the things I uh, didn't love about the bike other than that brakes are good suspension travel is plenty but still you get feeling like you get feedback from the ground am I gonna wait for all this traffic so no way am I waiting for this fuck this shit Also, you're a lot more upright on the Africa Twin. Like, on the diversion, I'm very much upright, especially compared to the SV. I am very upright, but on that, you're just like, sitting wide and even more upright. It's a very commanding position. <laughs> 